pleasant good morning to everyone welcome to another edition of the carlos brown show right here on the black college sports network yours truly carlos brown uh guest menu looks like this today june the 25th charles Edman, of course will join me as usual uh sitting in for today's show also coach damon nivens the offensive line coach for southern university uh, he joins me on today's Carlos Brown show. Then in hour number two, Coach Van Petaway will join me. And just maybe, just maybe, uh, another special guest that will surprise Coach Petaway. We shall see. We'll see how all of this plays out. And then last but not least, Brandon B.J. Jones of Inside HBCU Football joins us. As football season is fast approaching, you have uh, players, coaches included, meeting players and conditioning uh, drills in summer school. All of that, the excitement uh, is building for this 2022 football season. Here's what's trending on the Coles Brown Show. Alabama and them director of athletics, shall we say the former now, Athletic Director Brian Hicks, he steps down to accept a leadership role in the Southwestern Athletic Conference. And, uh, you know, I've had him on the show. Uh, Mr. Hicks, don't know much else about him, but um, uh, just looking at some of the uh, comments from social media, uh, congratulations to uh, Brian Hicks now moving into the SWAC office as a leadership role. Also, Bethune-Cookman University announces George Bright has been named Deputy Athletic Director at Bethune-Cookman. Of course, uh, Reggie Theos, uh, Director for Athletics at Bethune-Cookman. So you're seeing moves, you're seeing pieces being added to staff, and uh, congratulations to uh, Mr. Hicks and Mr. Bright. Charles Edmund, good morning, sir. How are you feeling? Good morning, good morning. I am doing well. All is well in the neighborhood. How are you? I'm doing fine. Besides uh, just navigating through this tremendous heat wave, it looks like, Charles, uh, a break is coming. Starting, uh, what, Monday or Tuesday? Rain, at least here in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, all the way through the weekend. And guess what? God is good all the time, and all the time God is good. I will relish, I will love uh, some cooler temperatures. Now, here's the here's the honor, honor, <laughs> irony of, of it all. Cooler temperature, regular 93, 94, 95 degrees with 55 to 60% humidity and a heat index now of 100 instead of 110 and 112 only in south louisiana maybe that yeah. it's a cooling down period coming instead of uh, 99 and 100 degrees now it's going to be 95. that's a cooling yeah. period <laughs> yep a cool spell and then we also got to watch the tropics too i mean there's some activity brewing we got to keep an eye on that in the next week or two so it's a lot going on with mother nature it's a lot going on in the southwestern athletic conference and you and our protection during the week it is never a dull moment, and uh, that trend has continued. Uh, you're absolutely right. Never a dull moment. And, um, you know, on this show, I try to be a realist, and uh, I am just want to bring up something now and, and, and get everyone's opinion in the chat room, on social media. You, you see the information where uh, you can find us on social media, all platforms. Um, from an economic standpoint, and you know, Charles, we've talked about this on the show, off the show, inflation is is rough right now. And so will that affect your traveling plans for football season? Included in that, gas, we know the story on gas. Hotels, oh my goodness, Charles, they have quadrupled. Also, you have family traveling with you ticket prices and i had coach banks on last week and i didn't ask him about you know how this inflation and and the economics will affect 
the athletic budget. You know, the teams have to travel. They're going to use gas. So, but back to my, my point, you know, food, you can see it's gone up. Tailgate and all of that's going to be affected. And, and I just know in my household, the budget director uh, has kind of laid the law down. It's going to be tough. So fans, alums, how will this affect you? And I can, can't answer for you, but I think it will. And how will you navigate around the situation that we have now? Supply and demand, Charles, I'm going to try to remember my economic classes at Southern University. When the demand is high and the supply is low, prices go up. So how, how do you... Uh, how you get around all of this, Charles? Um, I, I think for most families, um, and you talked about it, families with kids and you got a big family, you have to plan now. Um, I mean, I've, I've talked to a number of Braves fans that, and our tickets, our season tickets are on sale. Our game tickets are on sale. We did uh, have an increase in the parking uh, prices and that's been talked about on social media. And, you know, will fans continue to pay those prices? We hope so. We talked to our athletic director, Renoy Dido, about that. And he's just saying it's just the cost of doing business and trying to, you know, make up for some lost revenue in the past. And so that that's another factor in this in, in this as well. But, you know, to answer the question, I do think there's probably more planning going on right now. I'm sure for families, um, the ones who don't have deep pockets, I'm sure there's some cuts taking place right now this summer in anticipation of having fun in the fall, you got to cut back somewhere. And I think that's probably happening. I think gas prices will probably go down a little bit. I think they will be well over $3 a gallon. Uh, I don't know if it'll be four, but I think it'll be three and a half, between three and a half and four. Um, I do think for families, for some of these shorter trips, like our first two road games are McNeese State and Tulane. So for the vast majority of our fans in the Jackson area and Mississippi, instead of staying in a hotel for two nights, maybe one night, or if you, if you can't absorb that, then you might have to do what's called a turnaround trip. You know, those games are at night. They're six o'clock games, both McNeese and Tulane. You might have to, what we call, turn it around, you know, to save one night of hotel. I mean, you know, for safety standpoint, you know, you got to think about that as well. But I think just in terms of cutting costs, I think people are going to do whatever they need to do. And, of course, we have a lot of retirees that are alums. It probably won't affect them one way or the other. You know, they're, you know, if you got the RVs, if you plan on going to Tulane, you know, diesel is $6 a gallon. It's probably not going to bother them that much. If they want to go, they're going to go. And I think that's the bottom line, too, Carlos, with you talked about budgeting. For those who want to participate and do things, if you want to do it, you got you do what you have to do, and it doesn't impact you. But will it impact the vast majority of fans for college football? Absolutely. I absolutely believe that. And we'll see. You know, I think a lot of Braves fans are anticipating, you know, a good a good home season with Stephen F and just the cost involved with that. But I do think people are planning and preparing for that right now. You have to, because you don't know what the costs are going to look like. It might drop a little bit, but most likely it'll be probably the same, if not go up. So you have to plan accordingly, financially. Well, Charles, you're being very generous about that gas, that estimation. <laughs> I, I think it's going to be well north of $4. Um, I, I, I would even say $5. You know, $5 will, will, will be, the, be the situation. But uh, it's just going to be interesting to see how you mentioned that people are planning that's a good thing but what for those who know their 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 budget limitations and they may have to decide well instead of going to four five road games i may have to knock it down to three then i may have to make a decision on which is the best one um for southern university of course they start at home but then you have um, fans, alums that come to the game that's not per se in Baton Rouge, but in the outlying areas. Some come from out of state, you know, and when I say out of state, you know, it may be Houston. You got a big alumni base there. Uh, you have alumni base in 
in, in Mississippi. I'm, I'm just wondering, you know, with planning, you're right, they're going to have to plan for for the road trips. But then those that are retired, maybe on a fixed income. Hell, I think people that not, that are not retired, you know, on, on fixed income. So I guess you have to know uh, what you can afford, you know, planning. And, I, you know, I guess if you really want to go, you're going to go. You're going to find a way to do it. I, I remember going to uh, the Heritage Bowl. Charles, me and, and some friends, I'm still my best friend to this day. It was about four, five, or six of us. Guess what? To get to Atlanta, to cut down on costs, and you, you wasn't dealing with inflation back then, but it was just a bunch of younger guys. They're going to see Southern play in Atlanta. Guess what? We we ended up sharing a room, getting double beds. You know, and, and, and when you're traveling, you're having fun, you, you don't worry as much as about, you know, eating. You know, you don't have to go get a forty dollars steak and potatoes dinner. But it's just the the idea of traveling and getting out and enjoying yourselves. So that was a way. I, I knew of persons that would take out a loan for the year. You know, just for spending money. They they were they had very good very good jobs, nice jobs, and they would do that. But it is. Up at a point where you love doing something, you love traveling, you love going to the, the away games or the home games, what are you going to do? I, I'm just asking, how, how are you planning for this 2022 fall football season with inflation uh, rearing its ugly head? So it, it, it'll be interesting, Charles, to see. Uh, hopefully we'll get some comments in the, in, the, in the chat room that we can look at as well. Gonna take a quick time out. When we come back, it'll be more of the Coles Brown Show right here on the Black College Sports Network. We'll be right back. Whether it's advice on managing your anxiety or tools to help you stay grounded, Coping 19 provides a range of resources and self-care tips to help you cope with this pandemic. We can help. Find the resources that work best for you at coping-19.org. Chateau Desserts is a specialty bakery located in the Charlotte, North Carolina metro area. We will create delicious and one-of-a-kind treats for any occasion. Sugar Chateau is currently shipping cakes in a jar, offering a variety of different flavors in a single-serve container that can help you celebrate in accordance with social distancing. Place your orders today by calling 803-526-7895 or visiting SugarChateauDesserts.com. This is Carlos Brown, letting you know that we're on the move. You can now catch the Carlos Brown Show beginning this July on the Black College Sports Network each and every Saturday from 11 to 1 Eastern Time. That's 10 to 12 Central Time. Same time, new place. On Facebook at the Carlos Brown Show and Black College Sports Network. Online at www.mybcsn.net and on the BCSN app, available on Google Play and the Apple App Store. 
You see Head & Shoulders has scalp shield technology, protects against flakes even between washes. It's never not working. Kind of like us. Number 15? Never not working. I don't like this one. Me neither. Let's get out of here. Head & Shoulders scalp shield, never not working. Charles, I know it. I know it. Secretly, you would say who has the best band in the land. But I won't put you on the spot. I won't put you on the spot. But actions speak louder than words. I, I saw you there coming back in, but it just reminds you of uh, what's coming up. And, and I'll tell you what, you, you, Charles, you got a whole lot of polls that have come out. You have some called the too early polls, but it's an all year situation now where you look at these polls. We've talked about pressure, uh, who's coming back, who's going to be picked to win it all when you get to SWAC football media day. I tell you what, it is going to be an exciting time, Charles Edmund. Yes, it is. Uh, I just looked at the calendar. I think we got, what, 20 days until SWAC mm -hmm. Football Media Day. And, uh, you know, after the 4th of July, after you enjoy your barbecue and all the fixings, then you might as well say football season's right around the corner because time will start to speed up. And before you know it, after the 4th, it'll be Media Day. And after that, camps open up. And before you know it, we'll be ready to kick it off week zero. I think we got, what, eight more, maybe seven more Saturdays until that happens. So, Time is starting to, to pick up, Carlos, and, you know, with the swag being what it is now, never a, a, a dull moment, a lot of storylines, you know, we'll see what happens in football, because especially on the Western side, so many, so many questions, and right now, not a lot of answers, and I think that's what makes it, uh, that's what makes it fun, even on the Eastern side, other than Jackson State and FAMU, new coach at uh, Bama State, don't know what Coach Maynard has up his sleeve. But Bill Cookman with Jalen Jones. You got Coach Dancy of Valley. Who's going to be their quarterback? You know, so, so so many questions. So many questions, not a lot of answers. But hopefully in the next three weeks, we'll get some answers at Media Day. Well, and Media Day now with, with social media at its highest point. We've talked about it before. Uh, being in the business a while, you didn't have the, the influence of social media now Everybody gets the information quickly. It's breaking news. Breaking news. Who will get the news first? Who will be the first to break the news? But you know what I always say, Charles? Be right. I'm not as concerned about being the first to break something. But I, but I, I do know this. All of the hype. And, and you know, I understand it. You know, uh, you look at jackson state and and what they do as far as a social media standpoint uh they're they're really pushing it they have high expectations they feel when i say they i mean their alums and their fan base they expect to win it all and by the way good morning uh everyone who's watching in avis heath a guy that i've had the pleasure of meeting charles it is a humbling experience. I'll, I'll put it that way. He's a true <laughs> JSU alum. I will say this. Um, 
Uh, Chad is saying um, <laughs> good morning. Uh, Carlos, will you be playing at Coach Dooley's golf tournament? No. I am not a <laughs> golfer. It would be tragic. It would be horrific if I even attempted to play golf. Matter of fact, that goes for tennis as well. <laughs> but good morning. But, but good morning. But to everyone, but when you look at it, who will be the most improved team? You know, I've heard you and many others, they're saying, watch out for Mississippi Valley State. I believe they will improve, although their record may not indicate it. And then, you know, Alabama and them. We had this session we talked about. You didn't believe that Coach Maynard was in, under any pressure. You know, I disagreed with that. Alabama yeah. and them literally, literally, Charles, and I say after that terrific beating that they got, although if you look at their record, what, it was eight and three, but they've changed their whole team, literally. So we have to see what they're going to do. FAMU probably feels that, hey, we were one point away, two points away from beating Jackson State. So I think they're going to be comfortable. But to your point, a lot of teams are, are trying to break in quarterbacks all corn no one's talking about all corn but charles you know i'm always keeping an eye on coach uh mcnair who i think is is probably one of the top if not top coaches in black college football he just quietly gets things done he's not going to be out on social media a whole lot but he's going to get things done southern coach Dooley, you said tremendous pressure for Coach Dooley. He knows it. He accepts it. But he's no stranger to Southern University, no stranger to the Southwest Athletic Conference. The biggest piece that many are talking about is defensively. We know Southern offense is going to put up some points. Dooley is an offensive genius. Look at his record, Charles. But what they have done defensively via the transfer portal, recruiting, they've just quietly getting it done and defensively on paper, you can debate, you can argue that they will be outstanding defensively. You know, chemistry issue, I understand, get the team together and they're, they're loaded. Grambling State, their reputation precedes them. Huge Coach Hill at Grambling State where everybody is somebody, a lot of pressure there. But hell, it's pressure for everybody. Texas Southern, Mr. Body, tremendous athlete. Will the pieces be around him to get it done? Prairie View and them, new coach, not, he's familiar with the program though. No one's talking about the defending West champions. Pine Bluff. So it's going to be interesting, Charles. You look like you have something that you want to get off your chest. Well, well, I, I want to I want to do an, an addendum to it. We talked I, we talked last week about the different coaches, Coach Maynor at Alabama A and M. Well, now the dynamics have changed a little bit. You're going to have a new athletic director there at Alabama A and M. The AD that gave him the new deal is no longer going to be there. He's heading to the SWAC office. And, uh, and 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 by the way, I know Mr. Hicks pretty well, and I know Coach Coach uh, Coach Petaway will talk about it a lot more later on. But you know, he lasted ten years there. And with tail end, he was able to get a new basketball arena. And he was able to work through a lot of different presidents. There have been you know at least two that I know of, maybe three in that ten year period at Alabama A and M. For him to be able to navigate those waters and get stuff done, I think it I think it's a testament to him. So, you know, congratulations to him in his in his move to the SWAC office. But I think now with a new AD, unless there's someone in-house that will be the athletic director, you know, we'll we'll see how how that works in terms of Coach Maynard and the pressure. He may be under more pressure, less pressure. We'll see. So the dynamics may change a little bit in Huntsville. We'll see. Well, and, and speaking of that, I, I wonder who will be, you mentioned in-house, at Alabama AM. 
I just have a strange feeling that Alabama and them is looking, lurking somewhere. I wonder if they're lurking in Baton Rouge. You just <laughs> never know. Yeah. Um, but that's an important next hire. That's an important position. And look, we give them a hard time a lot of times. Um, being director of athletics, they have a tough job. I understand that. But it's going to be a crucial hire for Alabama and them. And right, you're right. We got Coach Petaway coming up um, within the show, and um, I'll, I'll just kind of ask him, you know, just his opinion. What will be the criteria if he was making the hire, or and as a consultant, the next director of athletics? Because you you're in some uh, challenging times, but you're also in a time where the the conference as a whole. You know, with a dynamic commissioner leading the way, you're trending upward. The sky is is bright for the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Go ahead, Charles. I, I think this is probably one of the most important AD hires that Alabama a has ever had to deal with. Because you have a football program, obviously, that's that's been on the up and up. I still think it's on the up and up. Coach Maynard's done an outstanding mm -hmm. job on this way title, albeit it was in the spring. Some people watered that down. Um, you got a basketball arena coming online in the fall. You have a new basketball men's coach. Um, and I th even think with the other situation with softball and baseball, you know, as part of this new arena, it kind of intruded on the softball complex there as well as the baseball complex. So that's going to have to be dealt with. So this is an important hire for Alabama a and truly in terms of fundraising, in terms of putting everything in the right, putting all the right pieces in place to make sure that athletic program is, is in the right place. Because look, Huntsville, I don't know, a lot of people might not know this, but Huntsville, Alabama is the fastest growing city in the state of Alabama. You got the space I center there. Yep, a lot of people might not. Huntsville, Alabama is the fastest growing city in, in the state of Alabama. So there's a lot to look forward to and with the right hire that can make the right connections and shake the right hands and kiss the right babies, you could have something really special at Alabama A&M. Cruise Stadium still looks terrific. They got a new, I mean, it's not new now, but they have turf there, which is pretty good. A lot of high schools are playing there, new basketball arena. So there, there's a lot of good potential there in Huntsville. So if you make the right hire, I think the sky's the limit for Alabama A&M athletics. And as we get ready to close out this segment, Charles, you look, um, you often like to have stability in that position. Let's kind of take a quick, quick glance around around the conference. Fam, you will be looking for a new director of athletics, correct? Jackson State yeah. has stability there. And Ashley uh, Robinson, Mississippi Valley State has a new director of athletics. Alabama State, relatively new, Dr. Cable, correct? Gramlin State has a new director of athletics. That's Dr. Scott. Um, not new to, to uh, yeah, yeah, I was going to get there. All corn, but back to Dr. Scott. I mean, uh, uh, you know, experience in that department. This is his first job, though, being the head of an athletic department. Coach Banks, stability at Southern University. Alcorn, a new director of athletics. Uh, Texas Southern, stability, Dr. Granger. And then Prairie View, Dr. Reed, still relatively new at Prairie View a and but he has experience as being director of athletics. So it, it, it is crucial to, to, to have stability. So Alabama a and looking for a new director of athletics. And if they look within the conference, let's say they get somebody within the conference, then there'll be a, another opening somewhere in the conference if they choose to do that. So with that being said, it's really an important uh, hire, as you, you stated. I'm uh, going to take a, another quick time out. Uh, the next few minutes, I'm scheduled to uh, visit with uh, Coach Damon Nivens. Um, speaking of stability, he has stability. He played at Southern University, graduated in 2003. He has 
been throughout the conference at Prairie View previously at um, University of Arkansas Pine Bluff. Matter of fact, Charles, he probably coached, uh, had a hand in coaching one of the uh, most dominant players in the conference from a, and there's been a lot of them uh, from the offensive line perspective. And that's Terrence Armstead, who uh, now is with the Miami Dolphins. It's, it's a business. He loved the Saints. But uh, scheduled to talk with him. And uh, we'll, we'll see what's going on as far as him coming back to Southern University and um, his philosophy, how it developed as far as from an offensive line standpoint. So take a quick time out. You're watching the Carlos Brown Show right here on the Black College Sports Network. We'll be right back. Well, I guess we're not going to be right back. <laughs> well, with that being said, my people that don't get to see me, trying to remind you who you are, just like in Romans 3. See, we about to blow across the world just like a day that's breezy. This motivation for the people and this classic Bible teaching say, hey, this for my people that don't get to see me, trying to remind you who you are, just like in Romans 3. See, we about to blow across the world just like a day that's breezy. This motivation for the people and this classic Bible teaching say, hey, 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 motivation. I'm returning to Clinton, Paris, and Tampa's my community. I grew up here, went to school here, and my wife and I make our home here. What makes Tampa special are its people. So when I represent someone injured in my community, it's personal. Call my office and speak to a real lawyer and not some referral service. I will fight the insurance companies to get the settlement that you deserve. At the law office of Clinton, Paris, we take the pain out of being hurt. Oh, that spin class was brutal. Well, you can try using the Buick's massaging seat. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Can I use Apple CarPlay to put some music on? Sure. It's wireless. Pick something we all like. Okay, hold on. What's your Buick's Wi-Fi password? Buick Envision 2021. Oh, you should pick something stronger. That's really predictable. That's a really tight spot. Don't worry. I used to hate parallel parking. Me too. Hey. You really outdid yourself. Yes, we did. The all-new Buick Envision. An SUV built around you. All of you. From novice to aficionado. Find yourself here. High quality cigars plus personal customer service. Slow Burn is Waco's only mobile cigar lounge featuring a meticulous curated collection of premium cigars. Visit our website www.slowburnwaco.com That's www.slowburnwaco.com to strolling instead of scrolling. Before we can safely come together, we need the facts on COVID-19 vaccines. Visit GetVaccineAnswers.org so you can make an informed decision for yourself and for your fam. Now you can live in Texas and not have a good red meat blend. Texas Cowboy Dust is designed for steak and other red meats. It's out to be my most popular spice blend, made with onions, peppers, ground mushrooms, pink salt, and other spices. Texas Cowboy Dust also goes great with chicken, pork, vegetables, and has a restaurant quality sheen to gravies and sauces. <laughs> It's like a loot machine. Going around town, trying to get down. Vanilla smoked sea salt seasoning is for seafood. The tarragon and fennel bring out the natural sweetness in seafood. I also use it in rice dishes, on yams, asparagus, blueberry pancakes, and believe it or not, chocolate chip cookies. 
Vanilla smoked sea salt adds a salty and savory component to sweet dishes that create a symphony for the tongue. Charmin Ultra Soft has so much cushiony softness, it's hard for your family to remember. They can use less. Sweet pillars of softness. This is soft. Holy Charmin. Oh, excuse me. Roll it back, everybody. Sorry. Charmin Ultra Soft is so cushiony soft, you'll want more. But it's so absorbent, you can use less. So it's always worth it. Now, what did we learn about using less? You gotta roll it back, everybody. <laughs> we all go. Why not enjoy the go with Charmin? Are you ready? It's time. The inaugural Urban NerdCon is coming to Montgomery, Alabama, July 29th through the 31st. Blurds, nerds, and geeks from across the universe will converge on the capital city to see celebrity guests such as The Last Dragon, Tybok, Megan Tandy, and voice actor Dave Fenoy. Hey, how you doing? I'm voice actor Dave Fenoy with a shout out to all my geeks, freaks, and urban nerds. Just want to let you know I'm going to be there and I want to meet you at the Urban Nerd Con Gaming and Cosplay event. It's happening July 29th through the 31st in Montgomery, Alabama. Hope you want to meet me as much as I want to meet you. So join us by visiting TheUrbanNerdCon.net for ticket and vendor information. This will be the premier blurred event in the universe. TheUrbanNerdCon.net. Our heroes, our villains, our stories, everyone's con. See you there. For 200 years, Montgomery, Alabama has been making history by people who had the courage to stand up for change. Today, this riverfront city has been reborn, embracing the past and looking forward to the future. From the National Memorial for Peace and Justice to the stage of the Alabama Shakespeare Festival, this is where history was and is made. We are proud to call Montgomery home, and together, we can be the change. Have you had your Earth Blend coffee today? At Earthblend Coffee, we take pride in offering you the very best of beans across the world, blended and roasted to perfection, giving you superior quality and satisfying and flavorful taste. Experience the world in one cup with Earthblend Coffee. Majesty is a premium health and wellness tea line focused on bringing delicious yet healthy tea blends to the community. Filled with an abundance of vitamins and antioxidants, we work to blend teas with exotic spices and fruits to produce scrumptious and wholesome beverages. So check us out at MyMajesties.com. That's M-Y-M-A-J-E-S-T-E-A-S.com. My Majesties, an Urban Passport member. Um, can I get the now bar, please? One dollar. Have a good one. Got it. Hey, what's going on? Hey. Let me get a now bar. Sure. One dollar. Appreciate you. you. Got it. This is the Dean of the College of HBCU Sports, Kenyatta Cavill of Dr. Cavill's Inside the HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. Come mix it up in the lab where the course lecture is in session every Tuesday from 6 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time on Facebook Live, YouTube, Spreaker, or the BCSN app. As we discuss all things about the HBCU sports culture, including exploring the week that was in the sporting HBCU dash as well as the upcoming week of HBCU Sports. With me, the Dean, the College of HBCU Sports, on Dr. Cavill's Inside HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Watts and Charles Bishop. Course lecture dismissed. Follow the Black College Sports Network and all of our shows on YouTube. You can find us at MyJBN Online and on all social media at MyBCSN1. Nope. Nope. Come on, him. Ooh, I like him. Quick, the quicker picker-upper. 
Bounty picks up messes quicker, and each sheet is two times more absorbent, so you can use less. He's an eight. He's a nine. Bounty, the quicker picker-upper. Whether it's advice on managing your anxiety or tools to help you stay grounded, Coping 19 provides a range of resources and self-care tips to help you cope with this pandemic. We can help. Find the resources that work best for you at coping-19.org. Sugar Chateau Desserts is a specialty bakery located in the Charlotte, North Carolina metro area. We will create delicious and one-of-a-kind treats for any occasion. Sugar Chateau is currently shipping cakes in a jar, offering a variety of different flavors in a single-serve container that can help you celebrate in accordance with social distancing. Place your orders today by calling 803-526-7895 or visiting SugarChateauDesserts.com. This is Carlos Brown, letting you know that we're on the move. You can now catch the Carlos Brown Show beginning this July on the Black College Sports Network each and every Saturday from 11 to 1 Eastern Time. That's 10 to 12 Central Time. Same time, new place. On Facebook at the Carlos Brown Show and Black College Sports Network, online at www.mybcsn.net and on the BCSN app, available on Google Play and the Apple. Welcome back to this week's edition of the Coles Brown Show right here on the Black College Sports Network. Uh, we're trying to uh, transition to get Coach Nivens on, but we're having some te technical uh, difficulties. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to, to get him on in, in a few minutes. Uh, if not, we'll just have to uh, reschedule Coach Nivens. So, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. But welcome back uh, to the Coles Brown Show. Well, Charles, we were kind of talking about in the last segment about the director of athletics and how important that position uh, is in Alabama and m They're going to try to uh, make the hire, and I guess the timetable, we'll, we'll, we'll see. But it's going to be important uh, for Alabama and m But back to football that, that's coming up. Uh, with Swag Football Media Day on July uh, 21st. We talked about it before. The predictions, the predicted auto finish, they'll have uh, the preseason play of the year offensively, uh, defensively. I, I guess we can be safe in saying that Jackson State will be predicted to come out of uh, the Eastern Division the Western Division, it's going to be interesting to see what the predictions will be. 
Will it be a, a Graham State team that has, you know, had some success coming up the Bayou Classic? A uh, new coach, um, recruited very well. Southern University, Coach Dooley, back at the helm, or back at Southern University, but the head football coach at Southern University last year took a Prairie View team to the SWAC football championship. Then you have Alcorn State, a team that has had tremendous success over the years. Their first year in the Western Division didn't meet expectations, but you can't count them out of the equation. All of that to say this, Charles, I think the West will be the wild, wild West. It's not a clear cut favorite, at least how we think the predicted order finish is going to go. But I would not be surprised if Southern University is picked near the top, if not to come out of the West. But Prairie View will have a say in everything. It's going to be the wild, wild West in the West, Charles. Yeah, I mean, I think if, if, if you're a voter, um, do you look at the fact that the coach that led the team last year to the championship is now at Southern? Do you factor that in? And we're talking about Coach Dooley, if you're a voter. Or do you look at the fact that the team that won the, that won the West last year in Prairie View, they have a new coach, but you look at the roster, you're going to probably have a new quarterback there. You got a new coach. Do you look at the fact that the team won it last year and the West will do it again? What I've noticed, what I've noticed, Carlos, in terms of the flows of how some of these voters, and it's the coaches and SIDs who vote, by the way. The media doesn't have a vote in this. That's a whole other conversation. But just what we know right now, typically you go with the teams that won it last year, uh, their direct respective divisions. So I'm, I'm guessing, and this is just my guess, that, of course, Jackson State will be predicted to win the East and my guess is that Prairie View will be predicted to win the West because they won it last year, even though you have a new coach there. That's just my guess. But, you know, you look at the coach that led them to the West last year. He's now at Southern University. So some might think, you know what, Coach Dooley knows his stuff. He takes his stuff to Southern University with all the changes, as you talked about earlier, that improved defense. Uh, a quarterback guru, he, and, and, and by the way, Devontae Kincaid is back at Grambling working with that program. Of course, he coached uh, Kincaid when he was uh, uh, OC over at Grambling, and he's back at Grambling now. So will the voters look at that and say, you know what, Dooley did it at Grambling. The only win by a SWAC team in the Celebration Bowl was led by Kincaid. Then you, you look at Prairie View winning the West, and now he's at Southern. Well, you look at that. So I, I think it'll be intriguing to see how the voters look at that, look at the West, because it could go a whole bunch of different directions. You know, all corner team that's won six of the last seven titles, even though they were in the East. You talked about, you know, body of Texas Southern. You see the videos on social media, how improved he looks. His body looks good. Footwork looks good. All that looks good. You know, will will they look at Texas Southern as a, as a guy that's returning and look at that that situation. So it'll be interesting to see what the what the coaches and SIDs feel like who's going to win the Western Division. I think it could be one of three teams, maybe four out of the six that possibly will be picked to uh to win the West. Well, coaches and SIDs, they get the vote. That's another story. Should open that voting up. Let's see um coach Nivens, can you hear me? Uh, we still, yeah, we, we can't hear him. Yeah, we, we're we trying to, to get Coach Nivens. Uh, I couldn't hear him. So we'll continuously try to work work on that. But, um, Charles, it, it, it's come up before. And when when the prediction, uh, predicted order finishes, when they come up, when – you look at the uh, end of the year, it, it's always a discussion that continues to happen. You know, coaches and the SIDs, can they really be objective in their voting? I mean, I understand some people are not going to be happy. Some are going to say, well, this person was uh, 
left uh we did our predictions at the Black College Sports Network, and we took, uh, I personally took a lot of heat from the Jacks, the Jackson State alums and fans, because I predicted them to finish fourth in the East. That's blasphemy. Avis Heath personally came after me. Hey, I was wrong. So to say all of this, said all of that to say this, what? I'm glad everything is played on paper. It's for conversation. We give our opinions. We give our predictions. And at the Black College Sports Network, we'll give a prediction again at uh, you know Swag Football Media Day. But uh, who knows, Charles? A team that no one's talking about could be in the mix. They could come up and surprise some people. But it gives great conversation. Like I say, there are a lot of polls out. Uh, Dr. Cavill's poll, uh, they, they're going to have a poll. It, it's a lot of them. But yeah. it adds to the excitement, really. It really does. Yeah, and, and just for a little background, you know, the rules are if, if you're a voter, coach, and SID, you can't vote for anyone on your own team. So if you're the SID at Alcorn, you can't vote for Coach McNair or any players, um, you know, for or your own team. So it's kind of a little bit more wide open, mm. but it just it, it it just depends on how deeply these coaches and SIDs follow the other schools in the league, and that's where I think the other media can come in because they're covering their respective team. Like there's a beat writer at Southern, there probably will be a beat writer at Jackson. And, and, and others, you know, you want to see more of that. But I, I think because you can't vote for your own school, you can have a little bit more objectivity to it. I would just like to see more more diversity and have more media people involved. I think it'll, it'll provide more conversation and even a better ballot, in my opinion. But that, but in order for that to change, it has to start with the football coaches. And I kind of, I'm familiar with that process because I've been screaming that for years. Um, the coaches, if they agree to open it up to the media, then it's a done deal. And I had an athletic director tell me three months ago because they saw so the all tournament team and, and and I won't you know name the name, but they said that process is going to change. He assured me that the process will change. So I'm, we're hopeful that it will change to where it'll open it up to more people to vote like yourself, like Dr. Cavill. Um, and others who cover this league from wall to wall. I think that will make it a, a better ballot. But I, I, I do think the West is going to be a hard one to pick. I think in the East, you would say Jackson State, albeit, you know, they lost a little bit on defense now. I mean, we talk about Shadur Sanders and all that, but the defense has lost a little bit. We'll see all those pieces, those four stars and all those players that they brought in. Travis Hunter and all that will everything fit together. We'll see. FAMU will be the tough test right off the bat because whoever loses that game is already in a hole. And we saw FAMU lost by a point last year, and Jackson never relinquished it. And so we'll we'll see how that turns out on the eastern side. But the West is more wide open, and I'm looking forward to seeing what the voters say who's going to win that Western division. Because I think it'll be a lot of conversation even going into media day on that one. Yeah, well, and, and I know – Jack State knows that they're going to be uh, the hunted, you know, defending champions. Um, although South Carolina State fans would say, hey, if we were in the SWAC, we would be the SWAC champions. Because, you know, they're talking about the Celebration Bowl. <laughs> yeah. And um, it was a good old-fashioned butt whipping. That's just as, as plain as I can put it. But Jackson State, you know, they have a high-profile coach. Social media, all, all of the ingredients to make for a pleasant storm as far as Jackson State is concerned. But it, it will be, you know, Coach Willie Simmons at FAMU. They, they feel like they can challenge. They feel like they can get it done. So, again, it's going to be interesting to see how all of it uh, plays out. Which teams, if they get a little adversity, can they overcome that adversity? You will have teams that perhaps are better, but their record will not reflect it. Alcorn State starts off with Stephen F. Austin. They got him at home. Stephen F. Austin will be in the preseason, what, top 10, top 15 in FCS? 
Then they got McNeese. I mean, then they, they go out of conference, Tulane, uh, Southern University, Florida Memorial. Everyone says it is what it is with that game. Then they go across town to LSU. Then you look at maybe their first conference game that's important, you know, Texas Southern. Texas Southern upset Southern University last year. So you got to win the week. I, I, I love when coaches, even Coach Odoms would say that, you got to win the week, one week at a time. You can't look too far ahead. And in essence, if you have some adversity and you lose a ball game, you can't look back. You always got to look forward. So the all-conference teams they'll pick, uh, defensive player of the year, offensive player of the year, you, you're looking at a um, just the excitement is there. And I will say this, Charles, a two-game losing streak in conference pretty much to me will put you behind the eight ball big time, big time. So there, there is pressure across the board. You know, you, you, you talked about the surprise, a surprising team. I said this a while back, and I'm sticking with it. On the eastern side, I think Mississippi Valley. Look out for Coach Dancy's Delta Devils. I would okay. not be surprised. I would not be surprised if Valley – I think it's going to be tough to beat FAMU, even though Valley had FAMU on the ropes in Itabina. Valley had Jackson State in, on the ropes in Itabina. Just learning how to win and finish. Couldn't quite do that. I think Coach Dancy and his teams learned from that. And I wouldn't be surprised if Valley finishes third. A team that, you know, obviously won three games last year. The administration had confidence in Coach Dancy and, and giving him more time. They got a new athletic director there. Uh, I think Coach Dancy is the right guy for that job, the right fit. A young coach, passionate, loves Valley. I wouldn't be surprised if Valley's that team that's just going to shock some people. You know, we got to go to Itabina again. A 6 o'clock game, Carlos, at rice Totten Stadium in Itabina. And that's right in September off the heels of Tulane, McNeese, Stephen F. Austin. You know, that's going to be an interesting one, you know, when we go to Itabina coming up in September. And who knows where Valley might be at that time. They might be fired up and playing well. So we'll see how that goes. But there will be some surprises. I think Valley, in my opinion, will be the surprise in the East. And just, you know, all corn, if, if, if Aaron Allen's going to be that quarterback, a lot of people feel like that's going to be the guy, the Louisiana Tech transfer, you know, getting him acclimated. That running game's got to be efficient right off the bat. If that happens, we got a new defensive coordinator. Austin right off the bat is going to be tough, but we're at home. I think the Braves can have a say on that Western side, but you know, Southern University, Dooley's coming. And so it, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun, but I do expect to see some surprises. On that note, you're right. It's going to be some surprises. We're going to take a time out when we come back, visit with Coach Petaway, of course, and, and maybe a surprise guest for Coach Petaway. You're watching the Carlos Brown Show on the Black College Sports Network. We'll be right back. App Store. You see, Head & Shoulders has scalp shield technology protects against flakes even between washes. It's never not working. Kind of like us. Number 15? Never not working. I don't like this one. Me neither. Let's get out of here. Head & Shoulders scalp shield. Never not working. Get to see me. Trying to remind you who you are, just like in Romans 3. See, we about to blow up off the world, just like a day that's breezy. This motivation for the people and this classic Bible teaching say, hey, this for my people that don't get to see me. Trying to remind you who you are, just like in Romans 3. See, we about to blow up off the world, just like a day that's breezy. This motivation for the people and this classic Bible teaching say, hey, 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 motivation. 
I'm returning to Clinton, Paris, and Tampa's my community. I grew up here, went to school here, and my wife and I make our home here. What makes Tampa special are its people. So when I represent someone injured in my community, it's personal. Call my office and speak to a real lawyer and not some referral service. I will fight the insurance companies to get the settlement that you deserve. At the Law Office of Clinton Paris, we take the pain out of being hurt. Oh, that spin class was brutal. Well, you can try using the Buick's massaging seat. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Can I use Apple CarPlay to put some music on? Sure. It's wireless. Pick something we all like. OK, hold on. What's your Buick's Wi-Fi password? Buick Envision 2021. Oh, you should pick something stronger. That's really predictable. That's a really tight spot. Don't worry. I used to hate parallel parking. Me, Me too. Hey. You really outdid yourself. Yes, we did. The all-new Buick Envision, an SUV built around you, all of you. From novice to aficionado, find yourself here. High quality cigars plus personal customer service. Slow Burn is Waco's only mobile cigar lounge featuring a meticulous curated collection of premium cigars. Visit our website www.slowburnwaco.com That's www.slowburnwaco.com to strolling instead of scrolling. Before we can safely come together, we need the facts on COVID-19 vaccines. Visit GetVaccineAnswers.org so you can make an informed decision for yourself and for your fam. Now you can live in Texas and not have a good red meat blend. Texas Cowboy Dust is designed for steak and other red meats. It's out to be my most popular spice blend, made with onions, peppers, ground mushrooms, pink salt, and other spices. Texas Cowboy Dust also goes great with chicken, pork, vegetables, and has a restaurant quality sheen to gravies and sauces. <laughs> It's like a loot machine. Going around town, trying to get down. Vanilla smoked sea salt seasoning is for seafood. The tarragon and fennel bring out the natural sweetness in seafood. I also use it in rice dishes, on yams, asparagus, blueberry pancakes, and believe it or not, chocolate chip cookies. Vanilla smoked sea salt adds a salty and savory component to sweet dishes that create a symphony for the tongue. Charmin Ultra Soft has so much cushiony softness, it's hard for your family to remember. They can use less. Sweet pillows of softness. This is soft. Holy Charmin. Oh, excuse me. Roll it back, everybody. Sorry. Charmin Ultra Soft is so cushiony soft, you'll want more. But it's so absorbent, you can use less. So it's always worth it. Now, what did we learn about using less? You gotta roll it back, everybody. <laughs> we all go. Why not enjoy the go with Charmin? Are you ready? It's time. The inaugural Urban NerdCon is coming to Montgomery, Alabama, July 29th to the 31st. Blurds, nerds, and geeks from across the universe will converge on the capital city to see celebrity guests such as The Last Dragon, Tybok, Megan Tandy, and voice actor Dave Fennoy. Hey, how you doing? I'm voice actor Dave Fennoy with a shout out to all my geeks, freaks, and urban nerds. Just want to let you know I'm going to be there and I want to meet you at the Urban NerdCon Gaming and Cosplay event. It's happening July 29th through the 31st in Montgomery, Alabama. Hope you want to meet me as much as I want to meet you. So join us by visiting TheUrbanNerdCon.net for ticket and vendor information. This will be the premier blurred event in the universe. TheUrbanNerdCon.net. Our heroes, our villains, our stories, everyone's con. See you there.
Welcome back to this week's edition of the Coles Brown Show right here on the Black College Sports Network. I'm Coles Brown, Charles Edmund, and Coach Van Petaway. Coach Petaway, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, Carlos. I hope everybody's doing well. Uh, It's a wonderful, beautiful day here in Huntsville, Alabama today. It's a beautiful day. Coach in Huntsville, as Charles stated, the fastest growing city in Alabama. Also, Coach, um, if we can, last week I, I got the notice a little late about uh, a listener uh, wanted to know about Coach Green, who uh, passed away, uh, former Alabama AM uh, football coach. Uh, talk a little bit about uh, him that you knew about him personally and what he meant to Alabama and him family? Well, I, I, I first met him uh, when my senior year as a student at Alabama and m And then when I came back to work, he was our football coach and I had an opportunity to work with him. He spent a total of eight years at Alabama A&M. And, uh, you know, he, he was a, a guy that like at the funeral on Thursday, a lot of the people talked about he was ahead of his time. When you're talking about one of the great offensive minds in the game of uh, college football, that was Ray Green. And I think when you look at his resume, you know, he, he coached at Akron. He coached at Michigan State. Uh, of course, he was at Alabama a and He coached at Jackson State. He was at uh, Alabama State in the SWAC. So his, his footprint in, in black college football uh, is well known. And he was a great motivator. There were over 100 of his former players that attended his funeral. And you talk about a guy, his last time coaching now was in, was in the 80s. But he impacted so many people that those, those guys had to come out. And then when you look at his footprint, he was all over college football. Uh, his assistant coach, Woodrow McCorvey, he used to be the offensive coordinator at the University of Alabama. Uh, coach McCorvey was also – Offensive coordinator at uh, for a while at Mississippi State. Coach McCorvey was also at Clemson. He's still at Clemson now, but he's an associate AD. He was on that staff. And then everybody knows about Chief. Uh, you know, uh, Coach was, uh, uh, I've been calling him Chief for so long. Uh, right now I'm having a brain cramp. But at Tennessee, the SEC knew about him years because he's the defensive coordinator there. He's currently uh, – and he was defensive coordinator at Texas A&M at LSU. And he's now the uh, defensive coordinator for the Birmingham Lions. Uh, and then, of course, you got uh, Rick Haley. Um, I'm so used to calling him by Brick. That's his nickname. Man, uh, we went the kid's whole career calling him by his nickname. And now his real name is, uh, is failing me, but his last name is Haley. He's a defensive coordinator. He, he was he was at um, uh, he was a, on a defensive staff at Texas A and M on a defensive staff. Yeah, and he also was a, a LSU a, a, as well. Now, I think we lost all of these tribute to a great guy. He was a great guy, and I mean, uh, not only he he was a he was a piss. He did so much for humanity. He taught these guys how to be men. And I think that's that's going to be his lasting legacy. But he was a great person, uh, a winning football coach. In his eight years at Alabama a and he won four conference championships. Uh, he was in the running uh, in the top every year that he coached at Alabama a and And his impact is far-reaching. He, is, he has helped and impressed a lot of people. He mentored me, and I was a ba- on the basketball side. So he, he was a guy you can look up to, you can go to. He helped everybody. He still lived here in the city of Huntsville. He was with the uh, city parks and recreation when he retired. And uh, he's impacted a lot of people. He even started he even started a football league, the Metro Football League, for little kids here in the city of Huntsville. So uh, his, uh, his impact on the lives of 
Minnie was shown at the outpouring of love at that funeral on Thursday. Yeah, well, laid to rest uh, this this past week. Our thoughts and prayers go to the Alabama a and family and the Green family for a job well done for, for Coach Green. Quickly, um, one of our trending stories was news this past week. Uh, Brian Hicks, director of athletics at Alabama a and no longer resigned now into the SWAC office. Uh, Coach, what, what, what's your thoughts on that and, and, and the Alabama a and family? How, how are they feeling right now? Well, you know, it took a lot of people. Uh, everybody was caught off guard. We didn't see this coming. Um, we, we we figured that he'd be here because this is his son's senior year. He's a senior on the basketball team. So that took a lot of people off. It, it, it got a lot of us. We, we did not see this one coming. But, you know, he's looking out for his career, for his family, moving on to the SWAC. Uh, he couldn't be working for a better organization. And now... It's just a very crucial time for AM athletics because, you know, you, you got summer school going on. You got the beginning of fall right around the corner with the athletes to be coming back. So it's a very crucial time for AM athletics. And uh, going out, trying to find somebody to, to fill his shoes, that's going to be a big job. And I think uh, our administration has to hit the ground running. Uh, their best bet might be to just name an interim for now so they can take their time and get the right person in here. Because Alabama a and is a gold mine. I, I think in the city of Huntsville, with the rapid growth that the city is is, uh, is seeing, uh, we've got to find someone who can tap in, tap into all, all these businesses and to bring Alabama a and more in line with the city of Huntsville. So I think it's going to be a, a, a tremendous challenge for us to find the right person for the job. Well, Charles, I wonder, and, and, and Coach Petaway, uh, I, I am going to bring in, uh, remember last week I told you about a person that knew you from afar when you coached at Alabama a and and, and um, as the head men's basketball coach. So I guess let me just uh, do this now. We can bring in Wayne Hayden. And um, Coach, he, he – yeah, I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fix this all together. <laughs> there he goes, uh, uh, Coach. Uh, good, good morning, Wayne. And um, boy, uh, what you say, Coach? A little bit different. He looks a little bit different hey. now, but he was head of the M9 section. Uh, you remember that section? Oh, oh Lord! No, oh, the nightmares, the nightmares. Yeah, they brought me the stuff. <laughs> yep, they brought the funk at Southern boy. You had you had to be right when you come down there. You better be dressed to the nine, and and you better, you better hope the team is winning too, because they would get on you. They hey, they joked one of my assistants so bad. Uh, I had to give him two days off after we left there. You know they they wanted to about his what, what he wore on the sideline. They were very legal. that that group of students. They helped Southern win some games down there. They sure did. They sure did now because if you didn't stay in tune to the game, they would easily distract you. So they did a great a job. Goal, Coach. Hats off to you. Well, 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 thank you for the kudos, Coach, because that, that verifies. I mean, that's well, – we got that rolling maybe a good 22, 23 years ago, and uh, that was a goal. And um, you're actually not the first swag coach that – uh, had fallen victim to us that uh, has given us our kudos <laughs> over time. So that is just a feather in my cap. But thank you. I, 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 that's very flattering to know that we did that. Um, it, it's a pleasure to speak with you in person after all this time. But we um, that that was the goal, and we knew we had gotten under a couple people's skin. But it was over time. <laughs> Funny story. I'll tell you real quick. After I graduated from Southern undergrad, I went to the Southern University Law Center, right? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And we had a reception in Baton Rouge for the new incoming 1L students. And this guy comes up to me, drinking, he goes, I know you from somewhere. Which, <laughs> it, granted, that's happened to me since I hit Baton Rouge. 
I was like, oh, <laughs> you might have saw me when I was in the band, dancing in front of the band. He goes, no, that's not it. I said, well, mm. recently I was in the media a lot, especially in HBCU circles, because I was elected STA president. And that had never happened for a white student at HBCU before. He goes, no, that's not it. I, said, well, I don't know what to tell you. You know anybody from New Orleans? I'm from New Orleans. He goes, yeah, but that's not it. And then we start conversing. Mid said, he goes, oh, oh. He goes, you in the M16. You in the M16. I, said, the M16. I see you mean M9? And the basket goes, yeah. He says, I played hoops for Bama State. Man, we hated you. He said, "Is M nine M nine? He goes, "No, we called y'all the M sixteen because y'all was gunning for people." He said, "Just <laughs> like you said, coach." He said, "When they were getting ready to come to Baton Rouge every year, coach was Spivey. Was that his name at the time? Yep. Spivey. Yep. Yeah, he was in Alabama State. Mm -hmm. Coach Spivey used to tell them the upperclassmen to get the freshmen or any transfers ready." Because they was going yep. to the Terror Dome. They was going to deal with us. And he specifically told them, get ready for that M16, they called us. He said, them boys, is <laughs> something else. And they knew, he knew specifically what you were saying, that our goal was to get in the head. It wasn't just to be loud. Yep. We would sit, right. as many of uh -huh. y'all know, we sat right behind your bench on the ramp. Yeah, yep. And it yep. wasn't just heckling. We took it serious. Now, granted, a lot of people didn't know, okay? The section of us was 99% former or current band members hmm. or other guys that lived in H.G. White Hall, which is across the parking lot from Mumford Stadium. So that being said, a lot of us had the discipline and structure and wherewithal to really think about what we were doing and be organized in what we were doing. It wasn't just fly by the seat of our pants. So a lot of times we go on the internet and we get your roster ahead of time. Yep. And we look at the roster. We see where people were from. Anybody from one of those towns and find out what high school, it should be something. Because once we were sitting behind them, no matter how much y'all told them, don't listen to them, dudes. Don't let them get in your head. Yep. We sit there and we just talk. We just talk loud. When we're sitting down, we just talking. Oh, you from such and such town? Yeah. Yep. I yep. went to such and such high school. Man, blah, 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 <laughs> blah, blah, blah. You know such and such with the big booty. Yeah, we knew her. Just anything because yep. yep. the minute we saw them just laugh at the corner of the mouth, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> if you laugh and right. listen to us, then you're not listening to Coach Petaway. Yeah, that's true. That's exactly that what happened. Yeah, and we just <laughs> sit and talk, and we we sit there with just a little megaphones talking to them. Hey, yep. and uh, I still keep in touch with all them guys on, on social media, and every time we meet up, I will run into one of the guys in Atlanta. Yeah, um, the first thing we say is, "Man, can you imagine what we'd have done with smartphones and social media? We didn't even have yep. that." Wow. Yep, the, the few of us in the section that had cell phones, it was an old green screen with black letters. We didn't, yep. we couldn't look you up and get a, a stupid picture of you or find out about your girlfriend or or nothing like yep. that. We didn't have so all we had was college club, <laughs> and that didn't, we didn't have small phones. Then. We strictly went on the most info intel we had was a roster offline, or full disclosure, I don't know who I'm getting in trouble. If we didn't have it, <laughs> we we might have mysteriously got a copy from the scoring table in in, oh. in the mini dome. We may or may not. Yep. I cannot confirm or deny none of those allegations. <laughs> but we uh we were some crafty guys, and we got the information we needed. But you're absolutely right. You knew what we were doing, and you could tell them guys all yep. you wanted. But we had all day to do nothing but sit there and talk in the back of the head. And we used to, like you said, we got on the assistance. We used to get on the yep. water girl. We oh, had yeah, a water yeah, girl, a water boy song. Because the minute we yep. did the water boy, water girl song, all your team members were laughing at them. Yep. Mission accomplished. Mm. That's right. Mission That's why right. I told I had to give an assistant coach. I had to give him, back then now, I had to give this guy <laughs> uh, a mental break, man. He had to have 
there you go, <laughs> to, to, to get his head together because he wasn't doing us any good. But you all are to be commended, man. Uh, I, I really like that because we started with our students at Alabama and them. We had a section called the King's section, or the King's Court, rather. And, of course, we had the Dog Pound. They did the same things to try to distract uh, opposing coaches. Uh, and, and I know uh, Alcorn State can attest to that because they got into Coach Whitney's head one night. But you all did an outstanding job. You helped, you helped your team to win a, a few games in that facility. And you all didn't know at the time how important it is to have that student help, that student support. Because most of the time, the the uh, the, pay, the older customers, they, they don't get behind their teams like the students do. And so uh, uh, that student help, that's what really energized those players. But now, Overall, you all did a great job. It was a struggle for us at Southern. But now, Coach Petaway got the last laugh now because I have a winning record against Southern. I have a winning record against Southern now. <laughs> but it was fun, man. It was fun. Well, we, we had yep, fun. Was and, fun. And what you mentioned was almost a, a, a secondary, if not co-equal purpose of what we used to do because the uh, – the um, the AD at the time had told us he, he really enjoyed us showing up and with our antics yep, because he had yep. more students coming to the game. Mm -hmm. Right, and, right. And, and we weren't showing out the game. A lot of people, we had other classmates telling us, man, I wasn't going to the game, but y'all cut up and y'all funny, man. We, we go ahead at the time to see what y'all going to do. And we didn't use props. We didn't do... We actually had specific rules, right? We had like the five rules of M9. Like, it, they're going to meet too. They're going to cancel me. We didn't let women in because wow. you couldn't be in there to show off for some girl. Right. We didn't. You couldn't come all GQ'd and dressed up because you couldn't be showing off. You, you specifically had the way right. the white t shirt was writing on it or something stupid distracting. We had that guy that came in there with. Like one time I wore a big old sombrero and painted myself blue, you know? <laughs> and and I, I, I kept yelling. <laughs> I kept yelling the whole game like Chris Farley, I'm a blueberry! <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember who it was, but we got into that team. They was dying laughing. And it just, like you mentioned Coach Whitney. Coach Whitney loved us. He got yep. to us through me, intermediaries like, he loved us and used to tell him, why don't we have somebody like here on a reservation doing that? We actually did a role game one time. We uh, they, Whoever from the six-man club knew we all lived in Whitehall, and they called the office. They were taking a bus up to Alcorn. They had about 20, 25 seats left on the bus. So I'm about, they called us, any M9 guys want to come? Come on, be ready at the mini dome. We were there. <laughs> we well, yeah, hmm. yeah they, brought, they brought a bunch of chicken shack with them, and we were good to go. And we showed up at the place. For, I, re, I specifically remember the first thing thinking, man, they got this guy's name on the gym, and he's still here because they had <laughs> the name the gym after Whitney, and yep. he came back. And so that just – and then – so we get in there, and, you know, we used to the dome, and it's really – it's a big gym. And it was <laughs> – long story short, I skipped all that and said we almost got arrested. <laughs> <laughs> and we learned real quick the benefits of having home cooking with our own SUPD because they let us right. out on a lot of stuff that um, we got uh, – we used to refer to it – we coined the term good ignorance. Yeah. Mm. So – Good and healthy ignorance, but there were times the SUPD they had a new cop, and the other one's like he tried to tell, "Hey, y'all, y'all getting out of the line, y'all getting out of order, y'all need to stop all that." And the other cops told him, "Hey, you gonna be next?" Yeah. <laughs> so we got on this cop the whole game. He yeah. wanted to leave his yeah. post, and the thing was, it didn't matter us who, because your players were listening to it. And we right. sitting there clowning in this cop for a whole hour and a half or more. Your players ain't in that game. And that's the whole right. that's the whole game. 
Yeah, I specifically yeah. remember. And Carlos, I'm, I'm I'm sorry if I'm out of you know I don't know what kind of FCC regulation going on, but oh, we no, closed, this was this was in the I believe this was in the SWAC tournament the year that it was in the mini dome. And a guy from J State, we were we were getting under him. We could tell because he he made a shot and look at us a point, and we're like, yeah, whatever, we in your head, we know, okay, hey. So he's mm-hmm. shooting a free he's shooting a free throw. And somebody, I don't know who, yells out that his mother's not circumcised. Oh, wow. (laughs) Boy, oh, boy. So needless to say, he didn't make that free throw. And after he missed it, he he told us we were number one with with two middle fingers. (laughs) Right. he He got a tech for that. And we made both of those free throws. That's good. Hey. So I, I only bring that up because you remind me that's a specific, tangible evidence of how, aside from being in their head, that was a two point swing from our efforts. Right, yeah. right. As wow. far as <laughs> un, as far as an unconventional, it may be alleged. Um, <laughs> we were proud of that. We were, we were yep. real proud of that. No, you all um, did an outstanding job. You all did an outstanding job, and that, uh, that's what competition is all about. That that's what having a home court advantage is all about. And uh, we loved it as an opponent. We had to prepare our teams for it. And my my upperclassmen would let the new guys know, hey, now when we go to Southern, it's gonna be a little different. Now they gonna be on you, and you cannot turn around. If you turn around, coach gonna get you. So see, I had a camera on my bench. <laughs> If, 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 if my players turned around and reacted to you all, they had to deal with me the next day in practice. So, oh, so then we, we had got make, some guys in trouble there. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. <laughs> but so so it worked. So what you all were doing is it worked. We need to see more of that in the SWAT with our students being uh, involved and engaged. Uh, that's the thing. That's what brings about good games and good rivalries. And uh, I commend you guys for having that. Uh, that kind of enthusiasm. That was great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I, I appreciate it. We still, from what I understand, there's kids that sit in the section now and because it's the section, but it's just, they chill right, out. It, it, it wasn't, it's not the organized heckling like we did. A lot of people don't know. I'll tell you this, Carlos. We actually got, I mean, we started as a ragtag bunch of band members and Whitehall residents that will go and, engage in good ignorance like i told you but we wound up getting chartered as an official student organization i, wow. I actually drew That's it up outstanding. and we had bylaws and it wasn't real complicated but a simple bylaws and uh basic rules and membership and all that and i went before the sga and this was before i was sga president and i had any stroke with him i just went before them and and got it chartered so it's in, it, we came and the, and the charter's still on the records. I don't know if they, I don't think they active. A lot of the kids said, hey, don't even know that there's an there's an actual chartered organization with the university signed off with the vice chancellor and everything that M9 was official Southern University chartered organization. And that what that did was enable us to not be so ragtag if we did choose to travel, say to Huntsville or Montgomery or anybody, anywhere under the official university banner, which at that point, um, the athletic director was all behind us. So we did that. I'm sure over time, and like I said, that was the, the that was 99 to 03 ish. I think it lasted a little 04, 05. Um, I do remember they were trying to take a trip when they played Duke in, um, I forgot, I think that was in Carolina. When they went in the tournament last time we played against them, I think it was spring '06, and that was the yeah, last time it was right. really organized. Where as a student organization, they were trying to take a trip and everything, but you know, a lot of those guys that started, we graduated, and we all across the country from California, Atlanta, and everything else now. But they try to, you know, but I. I say things like this, and I've been interviewed about different things over the years, whether it be in my capacity as a former band member or SGA president or M9 charter member. 
what my opinion is of the current student body. And I hate talking about it, but I bring it up that these kids ain't built the same. They're not built the same. These are digital social media kids that even when they're walking on campus, they walk around looking at their phone. They go to a game right. and they're looking at their phone. They're not as engaged as we were. They have other things they could do, whether it's real or in virtual reality. That sometimes going to a game to them is wasting time that they could be looking at Facebook or, or Instagram or doing a TikTok, you know. So I think that's one of the things that ADs and different uh, college athletic programs need to be looking at, whether it's SWAC, MEAC, you know, CIAA, whoever. It, and it's outside of HBCU athletics, but I do believe that's, that's one of the things that's hurting not only attendance, but in, in what I'm here talking about, the student engagement. You know, the, the, mm-hmm. the, the digital kids of this new millennium, they're not as engaged in athletics. They can miss the game and get all the highlights on their phone within 10 minutes of the game being over. So right. what motivation do they have to attend and support the team when they could just see the highlights on their phone right after the game, they don't have to waste all that time. And I think what they what they're missing is the overall environment, the experience of at the athletic event and the entertainment it provides from what from the sporting event to the pageantry to the student antics to the band or whatever. It was a it was a whole event. Every sporting event, every especially especially in HBCU athletics, it's it's on a whole nother level, a whole different monster from any other college athletics, and it's being lost in this generation. My rant and is guys, over. yeah, I understand. And guys, that's the thing that you know under Dr. McClellan and each individual athletic directors, that is something that they can push and 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 sell for lack of a better way a term that the experience that you get from the pageantry the band all of the things that Wayne just talked about and as coach Petaway has talked about uh Charles Edmund that's something that you got to continuously sell to the experience that you can have nowhere else but like a HBCU experience uh, Wayne, hey, Wayne, it is Wayne, Go, hey, ahead, last night, hey, Wayne, hey, Wayne, you all should plan a reunion, man, and, and come back and show the kids at Southern now how it's supposed to be done. You all that, never thought that, about yeah, that has been repeatedly, especially over the last 12 uh, months, sold to us. And I'm one of the main guys, obviously, that they contact about. So I'm probably going to be running a point on that and getting it done. Uh, for the, for the upcoming season, probably in the spring. Um, lucky for y'all, it'll probably be a Grambling or a Jackson State game, uh, <laughs> not an Alabama. <laughs> but it, it well, reason being, those are the, those are the two automatic uh, large Correct. attendance games. That was even right, one of the right. rules I brought up that uh, when we had our rules, you couldn't just show up for that game. You had to show up for every single game. You had to be completely committed to the good ignorance of the M nine section. You couldn't sometimes <laughs> couldn't skate. You couldn't go and dress like a pretty boy. You had to come every game, and you had to be committed and down for what we were trying to do. But we'll probably do that. It might be an A&M game. It's going to tend on, like I said, all the old head guys. You know, we all grown with jobs and everything. Right. Between I'm here in Atlanta, you know, guys in California, a lot of us in Houston, Dallas, all throughout the southeast. So it, it had to be playing ahead of time. So guys could come in and we probably do something, you know, just like an actual review and not just at the game, but like have a little dinner or a banquet or something, talk to somebody right. at the university, get some space in the field house or something. It'll be a nice thing. And let the university know, you know, hey, we're going to do this. We get together with some of the new kids and all that. So thank you for that suggestion. And it has been made by several people in and out of the university. Um, if I can, before I go, Carlos, I want to, piggyback or segue from something that you just said about um, the different administrations and athletic departments throughout HBCUs, they really need to find a way to market the event of HBCU sporting event outside of football, 
in basketball. Obviously, that's the big two. But even outside of that, whether it's a baseball game or a volleyball game, volleyball games are usually even easy to attend because in a gym, not their dome on whatever campus. But right now, the time is optimal for them to take advantage of the current um, environment surrounding HBCUs and increased enrollment from, and I'll speak on it, the current social climate in this country. HBCUs are, are, are much more inviting to the students that need to be there. You know, granted that might sound crazy coming from me, but I always said that, you know, I was denied opportunities on places for different reasons, obviously, but not because of my ethnicity. But the HBCU I went to, Dear Southern, still opened its doors to me in 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 her arms and still maintained, even though it had evolved, the same original purpose of Southern and all HBCUs of giving those educational opportunities to those that have been denied elsewhere. And now, as things are, it's more relevant than ever. And then you have the added exposure from someone like the Vice President of the United States being an HBCU grad and all these different things shining a light on it and how great they are. And all across the board, we're all getting increased enrollment. So now I, I say all that and I'm ranting again. I got to have it a rant, especially about things that are hold dear to me, like Southern and all HBCUs. But now is the time with increased enrollment. They haven't seen something like this since the early 90s. Now is the time to seize the opportunity for these Take administrations advantage. and Atlantic departments to promote and market for these students to get involved and use these athletic events. That's the draw. That's always been a big draw for Southern. You know this, Carl, is the football games and the band. You know, and then yeah. you get there. I mean, no, it's no secret. Growing up in New Orleans and playing music, the band is what got me on the yard. But it was Southern that kept me there. Right. You know? So it's I'll whatever you got to do to get them there. So once, once you get them stand. there, you got, you got to push these events. You got to make these kids understand it's a different – it's just a different monster. It's a, it's different. HBCU is literally a built different from any other PWI or other community college you might want to go and think you're going to get that experience. You're not. You're not. I talk to kids at Georgia State all the time because my firm I work at downtown here in Atlanta is within the you know a, a block from Georgia State, and they think, oh, I'm getting the HBCU experience right here at Georgia State. No, you're not. No, you're not. You can think that all you want. No, you're not. And like, okay, this time my rant's really over. I'm done. <laughs> well, <laughs> Wayne, time. Wayne, we appreciate it. Well said. I, I can't add anything else to it. Um, hey, have a great weekend. We'll be in touch. Um, if I can help with anything with what you're trying to accomplish, the reunion, just let me know. This platform here, is, is, you're always welcome to, to give the information out. But uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Much love and success to you and your family. And go Jags. Go Jaguars. All right. Good job. Y'all give me time. It. Anytime y'all want to call me on, man, just give me a call. I'll show up whatever you want to rant about, man. Yeah, we, right. we, we had to get a segment on that, the rant. Uh, Coach Pettaway, yeah. yep. that was my surprise yep. to you. And um, Thank you. You're, much, you're much love as well. And, um, hey, we'll talk again next weekend. You'll have a week to digest all of this. And next week you could uh, give us another point on, wow, the M9 section. They were terrific. Along with yep. Mama Jaguar, Jewel Promise, the late great Jewel Promise, Mama Jaguar, Wow. Ooh, Not just at, at Southern, Southern, you have all these type of individuals that throughout the conference, each school right. could say someone, Absolutely. they could talk about it, someone it was, like that. I tell people it was a privilege and honor that during my, it was during her last years or twilight years on the yard, but they haven't met her and known her and had the pleasure and the honor and privilege of holding and kissing her hand, like meeting the queen, to have known her and, and, and several of the People are legends. People have buildings and stuff named that for the owner yard. Um, yeah. It takes me back. I can't believe I was there at that time. But yes. But yeah, all y'all, it's been a pleasure speaking with y'all. Y'all have a great weekend, a great week. Stay safe. And like I said, Carlos, anytime, man, hit me up. 
Will do. Will do. We're going to take a time out. Uh, Coach Petaway, we'll talk next weekend. All right. Good, good. Stay safe and God bless. You all have a great week. You too. Um, I guess we take another quick time out. Our last guest will be Brandon uh, BJ Jones coming up. We'll return real, real quick. You're watching the Carlos Brown Show on the Black College Sports Network. For 200 years, Montgomery, Alabama has been making history by people who had the courage to stand up for change. Today, this riverfront city has been reborn, embracing the past and looking forward to the future. From a national memorial for peace and justice to the stage of the Alabama Shakespeare Festival, this is where history was and is made. We are proud to call Montgomery home, and together, we can be the change. Have you had your Earthblend coffee today? At Earthblend Coffee, we take pride in offering you the very best of beans across the world, blended and roasted to perfection, giving you superior quality and satisfying and flavorful taste. Experience the world in one cup with Earthblend Coffee. Majesty is a premium health and wellness tea line focused on bringing delicious yet healthy tea blends to the community. Filled with an abundance of vitamins and antioxidants, we work to blend teas with exotic spices and fruits to produce scrumptious and wholesome beverages. So check us out at MyMajesties.com. That's M-Y-M-A-J-E-S-T-E-A-S.com. My Majesties, an Urban Passport member. Um, can I get the now bar, please? One dollar. Have a good one. Got it. Hey, what's going on? Hey. Let me get a now bar. Sure. One dollar. Appreciate you. Got it. This is the Dean of the College of HBCU Sports, Kenyatta Cavill of Dr. Cavill's Inside the HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. Come mix it up in the lab where the course lecture is in session every Tuesday from 6 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time on Facebook Live, YouTube, Spreaker, or the BCSN app. As we discuss all things about the HBCU sports culture, including exploring the week that was in the sporting HBCU dash as well as the upcoming week of HBCU Sports. With me, the Dean, the College of HBCU Sports, on Dr. Cavill's Inside HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. Course lecture dismissed. Follow the Black College Sports Network and all of our shows on YouTube. You can find us at MyJBN Online and on all social media at MyBCSN1. Nope. Nope. Come on, him? Ooh, I like him. <laughs> Quick, the quicker picker-upper. Bounty picks up messes quicker, and each sheet is two times more absorbent, so you can use less. He's an eight. He's a nine. Bounty, the quicker picker-upper. Whether it's advice on managing your anxiety or tools to help you stay grounded, Coping 19 provides a range of resources and self-care tips to help you cope with this pandemic. We can help. Find the resources that work best for you at coping-19.org.
Welcome back to this week's edition of the Coles Brown Show right here on the Black College Sports Network. Joined now by Brandon B.J. Jones, who I, I guess that footage brings back memories, B.J., your time playing at Southern University. But uh, good afternoon. Congratulations to you. Uh, new addition to the family. B.J., congratulations. Uh oh, BJ, we can't hear you. Okay, hold on. There we there go. You, go. Uh, you can hear me now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Man, appreciate it, man. Congratulations. Uh, appreciate it, man. It's been rough, man. Sleep is hard to come by when you have a new one, man. It's it's rough. <laughs> BJ, that's what they tell me because I don't have any kids, <laughs> but I can imagine nephews and nieces. Hey, my brother would tell me, yeah, it's. Something that you just will have to uh, continue to get used to, and you got to help out, correct, BJ? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, because if you don't help, it will be uh, another set of problems if you get my drift. <laughs> but, uh, I, I know you're going to uh, be that guy that's going to help out and contribute. So, yeah, once again, congratulations. Absolutely. Uh, BJ, Swag Football Media Day. Fast approaching. We've talked about it. I want to get your perspective. Um, the predictions, the prediction order of finish. You, you know, hey, it's going to be I, I, Jackson State, of course, the the defending champions. Where do you see how the prognosticators? What will be their prediction? And then we'll we'll get your prediction later on as we get. Uh, closer because uh, BJ, you are part of the Black College Sports Network, and you gave your predictions last year, East and West. And BJ, I, I, I I'm still dodging Avis Heath from Jackson State, and not <laughs> only him because my prediction was way off on the Eastern side. But how do you see everything going? Oh man, so in the East, man, I still think that Jackson State is going to be the same to beat. I think that you roll with the uh, champion until until someone has proven uh, that they can beat the champion, and I, and I think uh, Jackson State is coming in uh, to the year. I think they uh, gotten a little a little. Bit, I think they gotten a little bit better. I think you're going to see a, a bell to door Sanders at the quarterback position. I still have, have some question marks about them on the defensive line, um, but I think that that's going to be an interesting interesting um, football team, and we're going to learn a lot about Jackson State. This as we did last year, week uh, one, uh, when they uh, go down to Miami to uh, face off against FAMU. BJ and Charles, would you agree or disagree that question marks are where they need to, well, we'll put it this way, where they need to get better running game, offensive line? Do you think they have to improve there to, to get to their goals? Yes, absolutely. I mean, if you look at uh, Jack State uh, a year ago, that Achilles Hill was the offensive line, uh, particularly in the ring game. And, and the thing about it is that with that offensive line, they had individual talent on the offensive line uh, because when those guys hit the portal, they were picked up fairly quickly. And, uh, and a lot of those guys were the FBS school. They had individual talent, but the trick with the offensive line, if you have to get that, that unit to play as a unit, you have all the individual talent up front that you want to have, but if they don't play as a as a unit, then you're going to be limited as, as far as what you can do. And Jackson State could not run the football last year, which made their offense very predictable, uh, which made them get into close contests because you knew what they were going to do. Who else in the uh, Eastern Division? We talk about, and Charles has talked about it, probably the uh... – Biggest threat to, uh, I'm going to put it that way, uh, to Jackson State will be FAMU. And, and quite honestly, they believe, hey, well, two points, one point, two points, they win the uh, Orange Box Classic last year. Biggest threat. And then Charles has said, no, nah, I'm not picking on Charles, but he says Mississippi Valley State. Watch out for them. How? Where do you feel about that? How do you feel about that? Uh, FAMU, I can definitely see it. Uh, I think the biggest question mark with FAMU is going to be the quarterback position. 
Um, I thought that that was a feeling for that football team a year ago. Uh, and we start talking about who is next. I think Mississippi Valley will be much improved. Um, it's going to be interesting, interesting to see what kind of production that they can get on the offensive side of the football. Of the football. I think they're going to be solid defensively once again. Uh, but the team that I have the biggest question mark about is going to be Alabama a and Look, we know that they brought in a lot of FBS guys. Uh, they, they, I think it was some 26, 29 uh, transfers. Now we're going to see the, 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 those names on paper. Does that translate to the field? Uh, and, and, and can they improve on the defensive side of the football? And offensively, what do they, do they look like life uh, post a quill glare? Yeah. So in other words, Charles, look, just looking at the Eastern side, every everybody's really going to be breaking in the quarterback. Jackson State running game is where they need to in, in, in improve. Mississippi Valley State is what I said, and I'll still stick to it. They will be improved, but am I ready to put them at the point where, hey, they're going to shock everyone and battle for the division championship? I see them making improvement, but I'm just not – there yeah and then guys alabama state you know it's gonna be breaking in the quarterback a new coach so a lot of intangibles and miscellaneous bj and charles will it come down to maybe how quickly the coaching staff gets everything together for us chemistry wise breaking in new quarterbacks who has the edge on the coaching side Um, I would say for me, I mean, if you're just talking about um, new coaches, um, ooh, that's that that's going to be tough. I mean, because I think it's no matter what staff you're talking about, whether it's at Southern, whether it's at Bama State, I think it's 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 that's a hard one to answer because until you get into live action, you just you just don't know. Um, that's a hard one for me to answer. Um, Alabama State, I just don't know a lot about them. You know, you got Eddie Robinson, third Bama State guy coming in there. Um, I think he's going to take a little time. He's got to get him a quarterback. Um, that, that's a that's a really good question, Carlos, because if you don't have that cohesiveness as far as the coaching staff, it's, I, it's, it's, it's going to be tough. You're talking about on the Eastern side or just overall? Well, I was saying the Eastern uh, division, and, and guess what? Uh, BJ and Charles, the coaches are, you know, expected to to get it done, you know. And, and hey, you know, players, you know, understand who has the four star and five stars. And boy, is that! I guess I'm a rant now. Is that overrated to a certain ex, uh, <laughs> situ- <laughs> situation, BJ? If you don't have the five stars, if you don't have the four stars, then the sky is falling. BJ, help gotta, me out. You got to develop them. Uh, Jackson State brought in a four-star receiver last year. It's already transferred out. If you don't develop them, it doesn't matter how many stars they have. There's a transition from the high school game to the collegiate game. And you can have all the talent in the, in, in the world, but it falls on the coaches uh, to develop these guys, to get these guys ready uh, to play at the collegiate level. Uh, and if you think you're just going to have talent just to roll in and it's going to be a, a ready-made team, you're going to be sadly disappointed. Well, and th- but then yeah. I guess it, you said it better than me to, to the point that I was trying to make. Th- how important is it? I mean, it's I know that's a, a, a question that's been asked a lot, but how important is it not only for the head coach, but the assistant coaches, the staff, training, all of that? That is important. How important is that to determine success for the 2022 football season? Yeah, I think you got to be really I careful think, with that. Um, uh, go ahead, Charles. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, it, it's important, but I think the impatience of fans is going to make it important. I mean, because everybody expects Dooley to come in at Southern and pick up right where he left off last year at Prairie View, going to the championship game. There's pressure there. Um, you know, wait a minute, Charles. Wait a minute, Charles. Charles, you yeah. went right into Dooley, and I wasn't specifically <laughs> talking about a specific 
<laughs> a specific coach. Well, well, well I'm, I'm just, but but do we do we coach overall? Oh, oh, overall, it is important. It, it, it is important, but it takes time. It's just like you starting on a new job, okay? Yeah, there's expectations for you to do your job, but there has to be a time period for you to do your job. And so, yeah, you're bringing in all these players and you have new coaches. All that has to gel. And it's just not going to happen in a three-month window or four-month window until you get in a live fire, live action. And we're talking about fall camp now. We're not talking about necessarily the spring you got summer school is taking place now. Not a lot of reps, some reps. But once you get in the fall and that fall schedule, once you get into it, like Alcorn, like some of the other teams, I think it's going to be a tough go. And it's just it's just a grace period that you have to be given. I think fans don't want to hear that, but it's just it's just hard. This is not. This is not Alabama or Notre Dame or LSU. This is, you know, a lot of these kids not even on campus right now. So there's going to take some time to put it together. I don't think fans want to hear that, but that's just the reality. So that that's kind of where I'm on it. I think as far as pressure is concerned, there's always pressure. But you also have to induce that with a little bit of reality. That's where I am on it with these new coaches, with Eddie Robinson the third, obviously, and other coaches that are in new situations and new places and new faces, I'm a little bit more patient, whereas most fans are not. A rebuttal, uh, BJ? Yeah, I thought it was interesting that Charles went straight to Baton Rouge, but I, I mean, I think Charles makes a, um, a point. Um, there is not necessarily the pressure, but I think the expectations are higher at Baton Rouge. Um, I think the expectations are actually higher this year than they were last year. And and, and last year you, you, you had a football team that had played in the, the, the conference title uh, two years in a row and was a game away in the spring. Um, I think because of what uh, Coach Dooley has done in his previous stops at Prairie View, what he's done as an office coordinator at Grambling and our, at Arkansas Pine Bluff, I think the expectations are high there. Uh, and then you kind of got the game all back again. Uh, you, you know, some guys who uh, no Southern uh, in and out. Some guys I know very well back on that staff. I think uh, some of the fans' ex- expectations are going to be through uh, the roof uh, for this football team and coaching staff. Well, I, I'm going to say it. W- once again, the expectations. Yep, we can <laughs> use that word. But I just find it ironic that that name was mentioned first and not somebody else who I feel is, is just pretty much one of the top coaches in the country. But he doesn't have an expectation. Shame. I know he does. Who's that person I'm talking to about? Coach McNair. But yeah. Maynard, all of them, all of them have pressure. Now, let's get back on topic here about expectations in the conference. Yes, Charles, you're smiling, but it's, it's ironic you didn't mention certain names. But anyway, that's just my theory. I, I, I can I can I, I can talk about it. I I, I can talk oh, about no, it. Oh no, 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 Charles. Yeah, too late now. Too late. Too late. <laughs> too late. Oh my. Come on, Charles. <laughs> I'm backtracking. <laughs> I'm backtracking. I know it's in the theme for the season. <laughs> on on yeah. the so so back to the to the east though, really. We've talked about all of the intangibles, the miscellaneous. At the end of the day, Jackson State, Coach Sanders, the staff, the players, they're under pressure because of the success that they had last year. Charles brings up no one expected that to them to win that quickly, but they did. And I bet you Jackson State uh, uh, fans who are just like Southerns, they have high expectations. So, yes, he's going to be under pressure. Yes, I said it. Coach Sanders, because of what they did last year, and their Jackson State, their fans expect excellence. I'm not going to sugarcoat that. Now, FAMU, different story. A lot of tradition. Coach Simmons, you guys know Coach Simmons. His expectations are going to be high. BJ, at the end of the day, I'm putting you on the spot. Does fam, you have enough to say, hey, we can dethrone Jackson State? It all depends on quarterback play. 
if they if, if families has figured out the quarterback position, and I don't know if it's going to be uh, Junior Maritovic or the young man that transferred from, from Vanderbilt, or they go to, with the quarterback from last year. If FAMU has figured out the quarterback position, they are a dangerous football team. If they have not figured out the, the quarterback position and everything holds the same from last year, they won't beat Jackson State. You heard it from BJ's perspective. Yeah. Now, on the Western Division, we, we kind of talked about if you go on just how traditionally the SIDs and the coaches – they vote per review as defending Western Division champions. However, there's conversation that that may not go the way traditionally that they vote. But we shall see. But in the Western uh, Division, you got all corn. As Charles Edmonds says, no pressure with all corn. Had a, had a losing, well, winning season, but a not an all corn type season. You got Southern with a new coach, but who's familiar with the conference? Who's familiar with Southern University? You got uh, Coach Hugh Jackson at Grambling State. Wow. A social media star. Grambling, where everybody's somebody. They've got a great reputation. They've got a great football program, a tradition. Texas Southern, Prairie View University, Arkansas Pine Bluff. BJ, what happens in the Western Division? I think it's going to come down to a few key games. Um, I think one of the key games we're going to get uh, knocked out uh, week one as well in, in the Western Division. A lot, a lot of people are talking about it. And this Texas Southern improved. Texas Southern probably mm -hmm. has the best quarterback that they've had in that program since I can't remember when. And people always say, you're a quarterback away? Well, they got the quarterback. And they got the running back in the Arizona. They, 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 um, offensively, they can score against anybody. The key with Texas Southern is can you stop somebody. If if, if Texas Southern's defense can catch up to, to its offense, that's a scary football team. And I know there's some pressure on Coach McKinney out there because it seems like he has it, you know, kind of kind of going. But people want to see see you get over the hump. They got to do it against the defending Western Division champions, per view, flat out of the gate. So I think that's going to be a, a key ball game. A couple of weeks later, Southern and, and, and Texas Southern in Arlington, Texas. Mm -hmm. I think that that's going to be another key. Texas Southern got the win over Southern last year. How different does Southern look uh, in 2022 compared to 2021? Uh, and, and I think that just those inner battles between Grambling, Prairie View, Texas Southern, and, and Southern, I think the uh, – and they also throw Alcorn in there because I, I don't think Alcorn is going to have uh, another atypical Alcorn uh, type of year. Um, you look at Coach Fred McNair, he does it without fanfare. You don't mm -hmm. hear, him, hear his, his team mention a lot during the offseason. They kind of just stick their nose down to the pavement and get the job done. I think that it's going to be literally uh, a five-team race in, in, in the West. If you ask me to pick one right now, uh, I, 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 I personally I would roll Southern because I like what, what Coach Dooley has done, the talent that he's brought in. But I wouldn't be surprised to see any of those, uh, particularly between Texas, between, between Southern, Alcorn, uh, and Grambling, uh, uh, win, win the West. And, you know, Grambling State, wow. You know, you, you look at, on paper, the recruiting that they've done. They've got a head football coach that has NFL experience. You look at Grambling State. And you look at all corn schedule. They could be better, but their record may not show it. Grandma State has a tough opening three games. All corn does as well. Southern University schedule maybe more up and down because Florida Memorial, then BJ, then LSU the, the, the next week. I think scheduling, and particularly the non-conference games, may, may, may not set the tone for how well the team's do in conference. BJ, am I totally off base on that? No, you're, you're right. And I think Alcorn has, to me, the biggest game, the biggest non-conference game in the conference this year. Alcorn welcomes in a top 10 ranked FCS opponent to the reservation. That's huge. Big opportunity for Alcorn. Mm -hmm. Big statement opportunity for the conference. And if you're an Alcorn fan, 
you need to be there on the reservation. That that thing needs to be rocking. Um, because it's gonna be a huge, huge opportunity, like I said, for Alcorn. Depending on how Alcorn plays in that game, that, that's a statement game for Alcorn, not only for just Alcorn and, and the conference as a whole, but sends a message to the rest of the swag that Alcorn um is back and, and they mean business um, as far as twenty twenty two season. Yep, McNeese, Tulane. Tulane, it is what it is, playing up. But McNeese, uh, Charles, is a game that you, and Stephen F. Austin, that you look at and you kind of, you know, measure yourselves. Because, you know, once again, I'm going to bring up social media because that is a thing now. You know, you have a lot of conversation going on. Well, you know, hey, just like basketball, how can the conference elevate itself particularly in the non-conference games, because Jackson State and, 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 and Campbell, they're, they're going to play. Those are important games, and it can, like BJ said, can mean wonders to get yeah, a it, victory it, in those games. So, Charles, there is pressure. There is pressure. Yeah, I mean, you know, Stephen F. Stephen F. Is, is is a terrific opponent. We played Stephen F. back in the late Steve McNair days in, in the 90s. I mean, they were terrific, you know, the one double A opponent then. And this is a, a huge matchup. McNeese, another solid team in, in the FCS that's been a playoff bound over the years, kind of had their struggles. And then Tulane, you know, a program well, kind of mid, mid major ish, maybe, maybe not, depending on how you look at it. I kind of look at that game like we played New Mexico State, you know, a few years ago when Felix Harper came off the bench and almost beat New Mexico State. You know, a, a, a two-lane school that's three hours from our campus. So three solid games to start. If, if we stay healthy, play well, I think it'll it'll do wonders for us once we get into conference play as we go to Valley and as we go to Southern uh, coming up right after that. Well, BJ, get ready for your predictions when you get to Swag Media Day. And um, I, I can't remember. You probably did – Mm, better than me. I, I just had one hellacious with my Eastern Division uh, pick. <laughs> and so, you know, hey, I, 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 I guess I'll live that down uh, uh, eventually. But uh, guys got to wrap it up. But um, BJ, uh, hey, once again, congratulations on the new addition to the uh, uh, family. Uh, Thank you. Appreciate you coming on. And BJ, I don't know. I, I, I I, I got to talk to my budget director. SWAC Media Day in Birmingham. Wow. Inflation, prices, my goodness. Whew. And I'm like, Charles, a turnaround trip is out of the question. I wanted to stay two nights, but I'll have to see. I'll have to see. Wow. But guys, hey, appreciate, uh, also appreciate uh, Melody uh, producing to the Day's show and everyone who uh, tune in, we appreciate you. Until next time, we got to get out of here. Until next time at 11 a.m. for another edition of the Carlos Brown Show right here on the Black College Sports Network. Until that time, as always, peace and God bless.